Hey guys, we're at Reckless Shipyards. I was hanging out with Tony and checking out these new Serial One models. I actually covered the, the Mosh earlier, $37.99. And now we've got the Rush City. And this is the step through model. Apparently they had a high step in 2021, but for 2022 it's step through only. And then you go to the Rush City Speed if you want class three. So I wanted to focus on this one here. This is class one. It's a step through, very approachable. Three frame sizes, two colorways, really beautiful purpose-built bike all these bikes are are great and what stood out to me is just how burly they are I mean this has a 15 millimeter through axle boost hub spacing up front 110 millimeters 148 millimeters in the back so you get that sturdier spoke bracing angle and that is not a hub motor this is a mid drive it's got the Broza s mag motor in fact both of these do the mosh city that's a single speed so if you want more pedal variation uh, maybe a little bit easier to climb a little bit slower cadence once you're up to speed this is the bike to go for it's got the nvo low this is the automatic automatically shifting continuously variable transmission it's got these orbs inside and they kind of a natural smooth shifting that can actually happen at standstill and the bike will do that automatically so when when you stop pedaling it kind of shifts back down to make it easy to start really appreciate that now it does add to the price point a little bit and it adds a little bit more weight this bike as you see here is about 60 pounds which isn't too bad considering it's got these full length plastic fenders with racks built on it's got integrated lights including this 900 lumen headlight this thing is just awesome it's up high it's going to keep you visible in addition to this running light badge that they've got so serial one is named after the serial number one first motorcycle that Harley built. It was kind of like a moped where you pedaled along, but it was, a, it was a motorcycle. So it's inspired by that. And it's actually kind of spun off. Harley is a, a shareholder in this. You can see the branding right here. They did a lot in terms of uh, designing this battery just to be very compact. And look at where it's positioned. The weight is low and centered on the frame, about six and a half pounds for the battery and also for the motor. I talked about the Broza S mag earlier with a magnesium housing. It's light, it's fairly compact, and it's pretty dynamic. So it's measuring your pedal cadence, pedal torque, and rear wheel speed. And they've got the sensor connected here to the outside of the disc brake rotor. So it's not one of those spoke magnets. You don't have to have an extra little sensor tacked onto the frame. You might notice that most of the wires are hidden on this, except for this one. This is extra. Uh, normally you just have this short wire. This is a USB-C so you can charge your phone and use it for GPS. The app is actually really cool and I'll show that a little bit later, but we've got a little extender here just to make it easier. All the rest of the wires and cables, including the hydraulic disc brake lines, they go into the handlebar and then through the frame and then they come out just a little bit back here. One of the things that stood out to me was you're using a key to unlock the battery, kind of lifts up from the top and it also opens up this storage compartment on the down tube so you can bring along a folding lock and you could get that key to like as well. There's so much that you could do with this and then the frame has a GPS like SIM card. There's a partnership with Google. So there's an added level of security with this bike. You just don't see anywhere else. The way they designed the frame, they don't have to have a brake in order to get that belt on because it kind of mounts from the bottom. These Gates carbon belt drives are known for being very reliable, more so than a chain. They're lightweight, they're clean and they're quiet. And just the way that this is set up, you've got this plastic belt ring or chain ring cover. So you're not gonna touch your pant legs or your dress on the belt. And even if they did, again, it's it's cleaner the way this is set up. It's not gonna bounce all over the place. And there's no derailleur hanging down that could be vulnerable if the bike tips or you're at a bike rack or something. You can see a cable right here that actually powers the automatic and it's running off of that main battery, just like the lights. 170 millimeter Praxis branded crank arms, Welgo aluminum alloy platform pedals, kind of the BMX style. I really like these, they're wider platform, gonna take care of you. And as I mentioned, in terms of cleanliness, these plastic fenders are extra sturdy and they really wrap around. The wheel size here is 27.5 and the tires themselves, they're the Schwabi Supermoto X with performance green guards. So they have some puncture protection. They have a reflective sidewall stripe. They're just gonna be a little bit safer. And that sizing, I, I keep saying, you know, boost hub spacing plus 
full-size tires, it's gonna give you some additional air volume for comfort, lowers the attack angle, gives you some stability side to side. And this bike doesn't have like a suspension fork or anything. So a lot of that comfort is just built into the tire sizing that they chose. I think that was a, a pretty good choice. It keeps the frame lighter and stiffer. It is a custom design fork and everything. If you wanted to improve the comfort a little bit, you could swap that 27.2 millimeter seat post with a suspension post and it will raise your minimum saddle height a little bit, but you know, it could be worth it if you're going the distance, going a little bit farther. I love the locking ergonomic grips. We got a low rise handlebar that sweeps back a bit and that proprietary stem, it's zero degree rise, um, but it's not as aggressive as it might seem at first. I know the styling is kind of like, you know, almost futuristic, but I think a lot of that's just to keep it fairly clean. The handlebars themselves, they're not super long, so you can fit through doorways and between cars and stuff pretty easily. And then all of the other utility features that you see here, we've got this front rack, it says max weight 10 kilograms. Maybe you got some panniers or a little basket or something up there. And same thing in the rear, this one says 10 kilograms as well, which is a little bit lower capacity than I see on some other racks. A lot of times it's 25 kilograms, but that's still gonna be enough for a trunk bag, panniers. You can see there's a bungee loop down here. I appreciate that. So coming up to the front again, let's talk about these brakes. Three finger TRP levers and huge disc brake rotors, 203 millimeters front and rear. And these are quad piston calipers. So you're getting additional surface area and braking control, which is great. And that, that larger rotor gives you a increased mechanical advantage as well as cooling capacity because there's just more surface area. For a bike like this, I mean, again, it's, it's only a class one, but you can imagine you've got some bags or you're just riding and you want to have that braking control. I, it's, it's overkill to me, but these are designed almost like vehicles. It is, you know, a spinoff from Harley Davidson. So I can see why they've, they've overbuilt everything. It's going to be more reliable, more durable, and easier to control. The brake levers themselves have adjustable reach. So if you get the smaller frame size and you have petite hands, you can bring those in a little bit and that's going to feel nice. Before we get into the display panel, I want to compliment the saddle. It's a little thing, but this actually feels really nice and there's a handle kind of built into the bottom. So when I was moving the bike around, it felt pretty good. Uh, okay, so up at the front, once you're ready, the battery's all charged and locked into position. Hold the power button for a couple seconds and the display comes to life. It says Broza, that's who makes the motor. It's transflective, so even if it's bright light, such as today, it, it, it's pretty easy to read. We're in off right now, but the different levels of assist, you can press the plus and minus to navigate through those. We've got current speed in the middle, and then a bunch of different readouts at the very bottom. <laughs> so if we press this little circle button, it's gonna cycle through. We got the clock, and we got trip distance, trip time, average speed, max speed, odometer. I mean, there's, there's a lot there. And then we can press plus to go to eco, tour, sport, and boost. That's the highest level of assist. There's a headlight button, and if we just tap that, we get a headlight icon, and then that 900 lumen lights that I was talking about. I mean, this is just fantastic. It's right where you want it. It's up high, and these rear lights are so cool. They're kind of low, but they ha each have two LEDs, so you can see them directly from behind or the side, and as you stop, there's an accelerometer in those, and they go bright, so it's kind of like a brake light activation, and they achieve that without having physical wires, which means they could use these nicer brakes, because there just aren't as many options for brakes with the motor inhibitors and the brake activation. I thought that was great. And we have a charge level indicator here on the left, and there is walk mode on the bottom. So if we hold that for a couple seconds, it says push minus, and then the mic will walk itself, which could be great if this was loaded up and you're going across a crowded park or up a hill. I feel like they've taken everything into consideration on this bike, but there are, there are some trade-offs. Anytime you're you know, using that deep wave step through, there's a little bit of frame flex, and you'll notice that more if you have the rack loaded up. So this is the charger, weighs 1.9 pounds. It's 42 volt, four amp. So most e-bike chargers I see are two amp. And that's great, this is gonna fill the bike a lot faster. And it's great, especially if you have the 706 watt hour battery that's optional for this bike, or you've got the Rush City Speed, got a proprietary interface there. And the charging port on the bike, if we just pull this back and plug it in. Oh, there we go. You can see that it's, you know, it could, it could pass. 
but it's a little bit crowded here at the bottom bracket area. If this wasn't all jumbled up, it would be fine. The right angle was definitely a good choice. You can see the key port here as well. So everything's a little bit low on the bike and you have to bend down a little bit. Careful not to bump your head on the handlebar. I was told that everything is IP65 rated, all the electronics and everything, which is great. And they've tested it up to IP67. That's good because of just the position here with water and dust and stuff potentially coming up here to this plastic surround. So I wanted to show you the app and we're back here with Regan. He's pulled it up on his phone. This works for iOS or Android. And you can see here that it's pinpointing a location on the map. You can type in another location. It gives you turn by turn directions. It looks like it connects via Bluetooth and you've got a lot more detail here. We've got available range of 6.8 miles based on the current battery charge level of 60%. I love that it's percentage instead of just like a, a bar or some infographic. And there are a bunch of other readouts here. So you can see recent rides, you can see the bike itself and then kind of brings you back to some of the details about the bike and some of the, the rides you've done. You've got privacy mode. Uh, dashboard auto display, the serial number, so many things. And then this, this data plan. So the data plan relates to tracking the bike and the security and some of those other features. So if we go back home and we say lock the bike, it can lock this bike and as it starts to move, it would alert you and then you can say, okay, flash the lights and disable it so that the bike can't actually be ridden anymore with electric assist. I suppose it could be dragged off, but you would know where it's going too. And since the, the SIM card is built into the bike, I, that's a pretty cool security feature. In this last menu here, we can adjust units and get some support for our bike. Again, the warranty on this thing, it's two year comprehensive, five years on the frame. So I'm hopping on the Rush City step through. I love how approachable it is, really low standover height easy to handle this thing. And the weight's positioned low and centered on the frame, so it doesn't feel tippy. Uh, and again, if you don't load that rear rack, it's pretty stiff for a step through. You can see how boxy the frame is. It's just very strong. I'm in boost. Very comfortable, very stable with the larger tires. Yeah, I don't have to think about shifting or anything. It all just happens automatically. In addition to the optional Serial One smartphone app, there's also an NVOLO smartphone app, and that lets you adjust the target cadence. When the default setting is 75 RPM, but you could go as low as 30 RPM and as high as 100, I'd probably dial it up a bit because I like to spin faster. It's a bit easier on my knees. There are also three ride modes, comfort, tour, and sport and sport just shifts the gears faster, so it feels a little sportier, I guess. You could also manually select a gear. The app's pretty cool, there's a little slider bar. It's very intuitive, but you do have to download that separately and connect to the bike to adjust it. You'll notice there's no shifter uh, mechanism or twist shifter on this bike because it's just the automatique. Very good on the braking, no problems. Just, just again, it's like overkill with those brakes. Well guys, that's it for the Rush City step through. It's pretty cool to see a bike like this that's coming from a traditional like auto motorcycle manufacturer that's being refined, that's carried forward. My time with this bike was a bit limited and I learned a few things after the fact I wanna share. Um, in general though, it was just very quiet and smooth and I think that has to do with that cadence of 75 RPM. When you're not spinning super fast, the motors just don't whine as much. I learned that the key set for this bike is from Abus and it's the key to like version. So you could actually match this to a folding lock or a chain lock, but you'd have to do that through a third party retailer. And I've heard that can take a month or two to get back. The battery cells are 21,700, which is the highest energy density right now. It's the same as like the Tesla's used. So you're getting a compact size and lower weight for that higher capacity. And they do have two batteries. So this one's using the 529 watt hour, but you could buy a separate 706 watt hour pack and it's modular. It would fit into the same space, even though the 706 watt hour pack is a little bit taller. That USB-C port we looked at is capable of five volt, two amp output, which is pretty great. Most of the USB chargers I see on e-bikes only put out one amp. So this will work better with some of the new smartphones and other electronic accessories. I was also impressed with just how long and sturdy these fenders are. I mean, they're pretty wide. That front just, it looked like it would protect your shoes and your shins while riding through 
a wet environment. I realized there weren't any bottle cage bosses on this particular model. There is one called the Switch Mountain from Serial One that has them, but all the other bikes just don't seem to have them. I was kind of giving it a pass because you could get a trunk bag with a little bottle holster or something, and maybe a handlebar cup holder as a workaround. And I was really mixed on the racks. I usually don't use a front rack because it can impact steering, and this one, it, it wasn't like mounted to the head tube or the frame. So as you turn, it, it would kind of tip and impact that momentum if you really load it up. The rear rack, it has the same 10 kilogram weight rating, which is pretty low. I usually see 20 or 25 kilograms. So we're talking about 22 pounds here versus 55 pounds. And it specifically said it was not designed to work with child carriers. So if you're a parent and you wanna bring your baby along, sounds like this just isn't the e-bike to go for. Still, this is a really nice bike and obviously a huge commitment from Harley and this app integration with Google and everything. It's very special to have five different models in a wide range of sizes and colors. It blew me away. You know, it's kind of rare to see this and it looks like they're giving it their best shot and I respect that. You can check out electricbikereview.com for all the stats on this. And there's a comparison tool, so you could look at some of the other models back to back. I also have a forum, so you can talk to people about the accessories they like or just their experience as an owner. Ride safe. We'll see you next time.